my name is Jess and welcome to my channel, have a look at this. Today I'm going to be reviewing and discussing with you Carry On by Rainbow Rowell. For those of you who don't know, Carry On is set in the same world that we were first introduced to in Fangirl, in the world that Kath wrote about in her fanfiction. But this is Rainbow Rowell's take on the characters, on the world, and it is so, so good. So Carry On is the story of Simon Snow, who is a teenage boy wizard that goes to the Watford School of Magics in England. He is the chosen one, he has been chosen to defeat the insidious humdrum, great name, who is an evil being that has been ridding the world of magic. Magic. Simon's roommate is a vampire slash wizard called Baz who he's been fighting with since he was 11 years old and unbeknownst to Simon, Baz is completely in love with him. I was worried that it would feel very Harry Potter-like and whilst it did in places, Rainbow Rowell definitely took this world and this premise and made it something that was completely her own. This book features multiple points of view. You get to read from several characters, not just Baz and Simon, you get to hear from other characters in their respective families and it is just so good, okay? It's absolutely brilliant. You definitely don't need to read Fangirl to read this. It is in no way connected. You don't need to read one to understand the other and honestly I would recommend either because they're both brilliant. If you're craving like a unique twist on the urban fantasy genre, I would definitely, definitely recommend you picking this up because it has been one of my favourite reads of 2015 so far. And that is pretty much all I'm going to say without spoiling you. So if you haven't read the book, go buy it, read it, and come back so we can discuss. Okay. Okay, so this book opens and I am immediately expecting to get some Simon and Baz love within the first few chapters. But Baz isn't there. This initially frustrated me so much because Ray Burrell publicly advertised this as a love story and I just wanted to read some of that love from page one. However, the fact that Baz doesn't come into it until the later chapters actually really built up the suspense and anticipation for when he did arrive and I felt in the end that it was a really good decision because we got to be introduced to Watford and got to be introduced to the characters before having the love story come and play in with the plot. The world at Watford is so interesting. I wish I could have seen some more of the school, some more of the lessons, because I would have been really interested to see Rainbow Rowell's take on those. The magic system in itself is something really, really interesting. For those of you that have read Fangirl, you know that a few of the spells in the excerpts that we read from Fangirl felt a bit forced, they felt a bit childish. But when Rainbow Rowell explained her thought process behind them. It's all to do with the meaning and the power behind words and how words can take on a double meaning. It became something really interesting and fascinating. Although I will admit that some of the spells were still sort of amusing. I mean like, you can't touch this was a spell. You can't touch this. Have a break. Have a Kit Kat. I mean, you know, if someone came up to you waving a wand and saying about have a break, have a Kit Kat, you probably wouldn't be that threatened. Can we talk about how brilliantly developed the character voices were in here. So Rainbow Rowell is an American and this book is set in England and I so much appreciated how British the characters sounded. How many references there were to life in England. I mean I think it was in the first page she mentioned Tesco's. If any of you are American and you don't know what Tesco's is it's essentially just a supermarket but that isn't the point. The point is that she did so much research into the British public and the British life that she knew about the name of a supermarket chain and I just really loved how the characters came out sounding English because so many times American writers will write English characters and to me they just won't sound very British but these ones did and it was so wonderful to read. Baz's dramatic entrance just made my life. Simon has been sneaking around the castle wondering where Baz is. He's so clearly obsessed with Baz and what he's doing and then suddenly over dinner one night Baz just marches in there eyeing everyone up. I pretty much lost it at that point because I had been so excited for Baz to come into the plot and soon as we got to his chapter and we got his perspective and we got to see him march in I literally had to close the book and take a short walk around the house before I trusted myself to pick it up again. One thing that I really love that Rainbow Rowell did in this was um, 
the different perspectives on the chapters. All of Rainbow Rowell's books that I have read have been told in third person limited and it was really interesting to see her use multiple first person narrators and I was so impressed at how easily you could differentiate between who was who. Like I knew if I was reading a Simon chapter and I knew if I was reading a Baz chapter, I knew if I was reading a Penny chapter. So you have the veil that has been opened. So in this world, every 30 years, the veil from the afterlife will open and ghosts can come into the world a short amount of time and tell one of their ancestors like a secret or something that's gonna put them at peace. So Baz's mum comes along and tells Simon about this guy called Nicodemus. And right away, you know, Nicodemus isn't gonna be a nice guy because Nicodemus is just an evil guy name. I was so upset that Simon didn't realize that it was Lucy who came to see him the second time because Lucy's chapters especially the ones right at the beginning when there were just all these little cryptic comments about coming through the veil were so interesting to me I mean I guess pretty early on that she was Simon's mother but it was still so so mind-blowing to read about it and so exciting Rainbow Rowell just did this great job of like connecting all these little characters and thought processes and Simon agrees to help Baz hunt down this Nicodemus and an alliance starts which was just the sweetest thing because they got to see so much more of Simon and Baz together and believe me in this book I lived for the Simon and Baz moments. Rainbow Rowell does such a great job with building their relationship. I really didn't want to read a cliche when it came to these two characters because they were two such well-drawn characters and Rainbow Rowell really knew how to give them their time and distance before bringing them together. When they defeated the dragon, that was so intense because Simon, like, he finds out that he can push some of his magic into Baz. I mean, I never would have thought that somebody chanting a nursery rhyme as a spell could be something that just sounds so intense, but it was. I loved the friendship that Simon, Baz and Penny formed with their little like Scooby gang. The second that Eb started mentioning somebody called Nikki, I pretty much cottoned on that Nicodemus was her brother and this was such a heartbreaking twist to me. I was so sad when Eb died so early on before she could reunite with her brother because from the one chapter that we got from Nicodemus's perspective, you really get the sense that he absolutely loves his sister. Christmas at Baz's house was so amazing when Simon like treks all the way from Watford to Hampshire just so he can tell him about what his mother said and about Nicodemus. That was just so, so sweet and we get to see like the real beginnings of the friendship and how he could only sleep in Baz's room because Baz's breathing comforted him. Baz's family dynamic was one that I actually really enjoyed. It was really interesting to read about characters on the sort of two separate sides of the disagreements. His aunt Fiona was absolutely amazing when she rescued him from those numbers. Numpties. Did anyone else just crack up when they found out that like monsters called numpties exist in this world? I mean of all the names for like a threatening beast that Rainbow Rowell could have chosen, she goes with numpties. Anyway, I found Baz's backstory, his family backstory, to be one that was really really heartbreaking, especially when we got to read the bits from Fiona's perspective and kind of tie it all in together. It was so sad. And when Baz believes that his mum would have wanted him dead, so he goes to try and burn himself with the magical fire, I was so, so glad when he stopped it. And I was even more glad when this moment led into the first kiss between Simon and Baz. I was really nervous leading up to that bit because the perspectives between Simon and Baz were switching so fast and Baz was getting ready to kiss him and Simon was was just totally oblivious and I was so worried and then Simon kisses Baz which I thought was absolutely perfect because it's Simon owning up to his feelings. I actually ship Simon and Baz so much. What would their ship name be? Daz. Byman. Byman. I will go down with this Byman ship. So much action in this first book but honestly I just wanted it to go on forever. I actually feel like it probably could go on if not forever for at least another book because there were so many unanswered answered questions in the end. The mage and Lucy's story was one that I sort of felt was unresolved. I mean the mage turned out to be pretty evil. Anyway, 
Here's a Lucy story I feel like we could have heard so much more about. I'm still not 100% sure how Lucy died. It made out that it was in childbirth, but it was never really explicitly stated that that was how she died. And then you have Agatha over in California who thinks that Lucy's in California. So there's that going on. Then you have the fact that Nicodemus is on the run and we still have no idea what Baz's mum meant when she said that he was her killer because he wasn't even there. Where are my answers, Rainbow Row? I definitely think that there is room somewhere in the market for a carry-on sequel because I am not ready to be done with these characters. Baz was probably my favourite character. He just had such a brilliant, snarky well-rounded voice although i also really enjoyed penny's chapters she felt sort of like an edgier hermione which i really really enjoyed overall i ended up giving this book a five out of five stars i would have given it like 10 stars if i could that is pretty much all i can think to say now because my mind is still pretty much reeling from the read it just made me so happy thank you for watching this review goodbye